Hi everybody, welcome to Livewire Review. My name's Jeremy and we're gonna be doing another adapter review. I had another company reach out to me to have me test out their adapter and today we have the Tesla Supercharger to CCS adapter from Lectron. Now Lectron's been in the business for quite some time now, so I'm actually really excited to try out this product. They've had quite a few years in the industry to fine tune their products. You might remember when Lectron first came out, they had a big bulky adapter for the exact opposite thing for when Tesla's needed to charge at regular chargers. And because there were so many communication protocols that that thing had to work with, it was a little clunky and a little hard to use. And it also had very limited charge speeds because you were working with two different protocols. Now today it's a little bit different. A lot of licensing th and things have changed over time. So it's made it a lot easier to make a product like this because the companies now work together. So for this example today, we brought a 2019 Hyundai Kona Electric. Hyundai has now been added to the list of supercharger users, and I'm pretty excited about that. And I really wanted to use an older EV today just to prove that this works. Well, without further ado, let's get into it. Okay, so we're just gonna open up the box and see what's inside. I always like to start off with that just to see what you get in the package. Fairly simple, fairly small box. It's just got normal styrofoam in here, but I am gonna note one thing. It doesn't come with a carry case on this one, so I don't know if you wanna keep the box or if you're just gonna throw this in your trunk. Honestly, it doesn't matter if it gets scratched up or whatever that is. The only thing that's in here isn't even really an instruction. You can extend your warranty to up to three years if you decide to go that route. There's a little QR code on here so you can do that. So let's get this stuff to the side and we'll take a look at the adapter itself. Okay, so the adapter's not very big, but it is bigger than other adapters I've used, and it is made out of plastic. They, uh, they use high quality materials in here. It's made in China, but it is made to a quite a high standard. It's IP67 rated, so it's meant for weather. It's meant for rain, it's meant for your normal environment. You can use this in the snow, there's no issues with that. It has high quality seals on both ends of it, and unlike some of the adapters I've used, it just uses a click button on both ends. Because it is two different protocols that we're working with, that's why there is two different clicks on here because this one has to give a signal to the supercharger and this one here actually has to give a signal to the CCS equipped car so that's the reason why there's so much going on on here okay at this point I'm just going to show you how to use this adapter it's a fairly simple process but you do have to download the app so if you don't have the Tesla app on your phone and if you don't have a Tesla you're not likely to have that so you just go on your phone to the Google Play Store if you have Android or to whatever store you use on Apple and you download the Tesla app you are going to have to sign up for an account like you would for any other charging station you enter your email address you make a password you add your payment information to it it's fairly straightforward now when you get into the app you it says charge your EV if you don't have a Tesla. If you do have a Tesla and you're charging your CCS equipped car, you have to go to the three dots in the corner of the app, you go down to charge your other EV, and there will be a different menu that you can open up. Now, on here, I do have an Android, I have a Tesla, so I'm gonna be going to the section where it says charge your other EV. So I'm gonna click on that here, and on this one, the map just takes you to where you are. We did use my friend's phone and it didn't do that. So you're just gonna have to type in the location of where you are and it will show you if that supercharger is compatible. Now I always bring this up because not every supercharger is gonna be compatible with, with other CCS equipped cars or even other EVs in general. Only Tesla vehicles can use a type one or a type two supercharger. Uh, other EVs can use a type three or a type four. So you're only gonna know that by going on the map and checking out to see if it is compatible compatible with your car. For example, we're at the Port Severn charger here in Ontario, and this is a level three charger, so a 250 kilowatt Tesla charger. That one is compatible with other EVs, and so is their new version four. But the level one, level two, which was like a 75 and 150 kilowatt version, you can only use a Tesla vehicles because they're from an earlier network. They don't have the same communication protocols, so they simply don't work. So make sure to check your app to make sure if it's gonna work with your car. So we're gonna get into it now. Um, you go to the, the map, you select your charging station. So we're on the map at port Severn. I'd say I'd like to charge here. And then you have to look for the port number that's on the bottom of the supercharger. It's at the very bottom in the middle. We're standing at the one that's number 3D. So I'm gonna scroll over to number 3D. And in my case, I already have the charging information saved in here. So it just says start charging. Now you click that before you go ahead and attach anything. So I've hit start charging. A screen is gonna come up where it says attach your adapter. So I'm gonna show you how to attach the adapter. Put my phone down right here. We grab the adapter out of it. 
One of the reasons I like the Kona is the chargers on the front. It's gonna be a little bit harder if you try and charge an F-150 Lightning or something with a charge port on the side. You are gonna to have to get up really close and actually you know, block a couple of spaces. Actually, I noticed from the last time I was here, we were discussing the bollards before we started charging and we realized that they took out the larger bollards that were actually blocking it and they put smaller ones on so cars can get closer to these because they do have short, short, short charging cables on them. So first thing you do is you plug it in here. Now it's a clip on the bottom. I'm noticing you can't plug it in right away. So that is something I'm noticing about this adapter. You do have to press the button on the bottom and then click it in. So once this is clicked on here, you just take it and you come over to your CCS port and you don't have to press anything, you just plug it in. At this point, some things are gonna happen in the background. You pick up your app, it's still gonna show the same thing on the screen. So you're gonna to have to give it a couple of minutes before this uh, communication finishes and it shows you on the app exactly what is happening. Okay, so at this point, the communication is done, the vehicle is charging. Now the Hyundai Kona that we have here is only capable of up to about 77 kilowatts. Keep in mind, this is a 400 volt system at Tesla Superchargers, at least for the version three. The version four, I believe, is gonna be more compatible with higher voltage cars. So if you bring something like a Hyundai Ioniq 5 here, a Kia EV9, or anything when Kia is allowed to use these chargers, you're gonna find that the charging speed is about half what is promised. So just keep that in mind. 400 volts in an 800 volt car, you're only gonna get half the speed. So we're up to speed on that one. So we are charging the car right now, and I'm actually very impressed. We were getting 40 to 57 kilowatts on this car. It's getting a little hot now, and the charge level is at 83%, so I'm only pulling about 36 kilowatts. It doesn't really matter now because they've changed how they bill it. Here in Canada, some of them are on a time base, but most Tesla superchargers on a per kilowatt basis. It does cost more to charge your car on a Tesla supercharger when you don't own a Tesla or if you don't sign up for their subscription plan. If you sign up for the subscription plan, you will find that it is cheaper per kilowatt hour. At the station we're sitting at right now, it's in Canadian dollars. We're sitting at about 70 cents per kilowatt. The last time I was here, it was about 82 to 84 cents per kilowatt hour. So therefore it has gone down, but it is still a pricey option. Check through your list of CCS chargers in the area. If they have a lower cost, you might want to opt for that. But there is a certain convenience about Tesla superchargers you don't get with other chargers. For example, there are 12 bays here. It's in a convenient location. It's always located at a place that has a restaurant or something else. It's just very conveniently placed. Tesla is the charging master when it comes to their locations, the setup, the uptime of their chargers. I believe it's over 99% uptime when you use a Tesla supercharger. So in just a moment, I'm gonna have Heather here show us how to use this adapter just to prove that it's really easy to use. But before I do that, I just wanted to talk about the adapter itself. So like I mentioned, it's made by Lectron. And uh, the reason this is significant is because Lectron is such a big player in the industry. This is actually the adapter that they rebrand and give out with the OEM manufacturers. I know for a fact GM hands out this one, just rebranded with a different label on it and maybe a different color of the adapter on top. I have a friend with a Chevy Blazer EV and he was showing me pictures of his and it is this same adapter just rebranded. So you know it's a good quality product if the OEMs chose this one over other adapters on the market to rebrand it for use with their vehicles. So I'm going to hand this over to Heather. She's going to pull out her phone and we're going to watch her check this out just to make sure it's easy to use. Thank you. All right. So I'm pulling out my phone, checking my app. We are going to go to charge your EV. So I'm clicking on that there. Now on her phone, we found that you couldn't just get to the charger. We actually had to search for it on the map. So we yeah. just typed in Port Severn, it showed the charger, we click on it and we go from there. Perfect, so I'm clicking on that now. And I'm saying charge here. Okay, and again, we're going and looking at what charging station yeah. we're at and it's 3D for us. That's right. So we're gonna click on that and say start charging. Okay. And you do that before you put the adapter on it. Yes. Yeah. All right, so I'm putting my phone down. Getting this out. And pressing. Not the top this, one, we'll the, do the bottom, bottom one. The bottom yeah. one. Clicking that in. Yep. A little bit awkward, but once you get used to it, you'll be able to find it. And, and for this, you plug it into both sections. Oh, yeah. Like that. Okay. And there we go. 
And that's it. At this point, the communication starts and we can actually just go have a coffee. But for the sake of this video, we're gonna let it connect and that way we can just show you that it's pretty easy to use. Okay, we're coming to the end of this video, so I'm just gonna wrap up my thoughts. Pretty straightforward. This is the charger that is used for other OEMs. You know it's a high quality product. You can see it's made out of high quality materials. I like how it's chamfered in, so it's very easy to plug this in here. You don't have to get it dead straight. It just clicks in really nice. It's not tight like other adapters I've used. And I do like the fact that it has two separate click mechanisms here made out of what seems like metal body for most of it. No, it is actually a very high quality plastic. It reminds me of the plastic that we used to have in the 90s that was really robust. Well, at this point in the video, just gonna say if you found it helpful, maybe like or subscribe to the channel and see what we're doing next time.